Anyone who's been in a relationship has probably run into the issue of how to equitably and efficiently split expenses. There's a growing sector within the fintech industry where companies are building apps and tools to tackle this issue of couples finance. Today, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Mike Perez, CEO of Pay Together, a startup that's building a mobile app to streamline couples finance. We talk about Pay Together's story and mission to improve couples finances, Mike's own journey from being a lawyer to a startup founder, and lastly, what the future of the couples finance space within fintech beholds. Please enjoy this conversation with Mike Perez. All right, today I'm joined by Mike Perez from Pay Together. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Great to be here, Oliver. Thanks for having me. Yeah, your product really caught my eye. I, th- I think the space of couples banking, couples finance is just this growing a niche within the broader fintech space. And it's always interesting to hear individual founders experience when they're trying to grow and compete in that space. So really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. And I guess we'll just start by digging around the company history and trajectory itself. So if you don't mind just launching into uh, some discussion about the company's history and story. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, so the company was founded by myself and my co-founder and best friend of 25 years, Adam Juhas. We literally used to walk to elementary school together So we've known each other forever. Uh, And back in like 2018, um, we were both in a similar position in life. We had long-term committed relationships. I had been with my girlfriend at the time for about six years. He had been with his for about four. We were just moving in together, starting to cohabitate. We had all of these shared expenses and each of us was using a different strategy on how to approach, how to share these expenses. So for example, I, I, I engage in what I call the tit for tat method, which is the sort of, I'll get the takeout tonight, you get the takeout tomorrow. Um, but I think there's sort of a natural slide to one person sort of taking over that role eventually. And no one really wants to have that awkward conversation of, hey, you know, Chipotle is a little more expensive than his taco. And, and I got all the Chipotle. So the tit for tat method was not working out. Uh, So instead, I started switching to sort of an end of month accounting. So we would make all of our purchases. Each of us would go ahead and sum them all up, put them into split wise, have it split it. And then we Venmo request one another back and forth. But ultimately, this was just super time consuming. You know, I I was a lawyer at the time. I was working like 16 hour days. And the last thing I wanted to do with my final Saturday in the month was become get my minor in accounting uh, and work through that. So for us, for, for myself and my girlfriend, we were having, you know, imperfect solutions to finding this ability to split expenses. Adam, on the other hand, had tried some of the more traditional methods. He actually opened a joint bank account with his girlfriend at one time, um, but that required constant monitoring, loading and reloading. The number of times that they overdrew the account was pretty astounding, actually. Um, So eventually he said, this is just too much overhead to take care of. uh, And instead added his girlfriend as a an authorized user on his credit card. Um, But again, he actually ran into the same problem I had. Once you've made those purchases, you still have to go back and account for them, split them up, and then someone has to pay someone else back for them. So we ended up falling back into the sort of splitwise plus Venmo problem that my girlfriend and I were having. So as we sat there and sort of brainstormed around like, man, we're spending a lot of time having to take care of our finances and realizing really all we were doing was simple math and computers are super good at doing simple math. Why couldn't we automate all of this and just take all of the stress out of our lives? Um, and that's what we did. Adam kind of, Adam is an engineer by trade, and he was like, "Look, I'm going to go out and find some APIs, see what I can start gluing together." Um, and back in 2019, he started doing that, and took about six months to build out our full platform. Um, and then it took about another six months for us to go through like the approval process with uh, Mastercard and the banks, because being a fintech, it is still a highly regulated space. Um, and then in 2020, we actually launched the, the company and are, issued our first cards. Uh, we issue what's called the Together Card. It is a MasterCard debit card, accepted anywhere MasterCard is accepted. Two, uh, two partners sign up for pay together, link their bank accounts, link with each other. And then anytime that they sp- uh, swipe the card, um, pay together takes care of all the math on the back end, splits it, and then automatically charges those linked bank accounts. Uh, and so there we had our first product. Awesome. I, I think it's always super cool to hear when the founder uh, or the idea of the company comes from firsthand experience. Uh, I think there's no better user research than to having gone through the experience of and that pain and translating that to an app that you, you yourself would use. And uh, so, yeah, thanks for sharing that. I'm curious, during those early days, during the founding process, um, your background by trade is, you know, you were a lawyer for, I believe, almost close to a decade, right? That's such an interesting uh, path into being a founder. So curious if you could speak a little to your own background and how that transition has been. Yeah, absolutely. So I graduated from uh, the UC Berkeley School of Law back in 2012. 
spent a couple of years sort of putzing around in the labor and employment space as a litigator, but pretty quickly realized that litigation is not my jam. I do not want to argue day in and day out for a living. Um, but luckily, I had a friend uh, who was working at Cooley LLP at the time, which is the premier startup firm here in the Valley. If, if you're looking for a firm for your startup, I highly recommend Cooley LLP. Uh, and uh, I ended up taking a job as a corporate associate there working on private and public companies. Um, and in my private in my private practice, uh, I was overseeing some of the what are now some of the biggest name startups in the valley. Um, and I got this opportunity to really work one on one with CEOs, CFOs, presidents, vice presidents, um, and got to you know actually give them advice on things like corporate governance, how they're going to finance their company, walking them through financings, dabbling in regulatory environments around it. Uh, and and I found that very interesting. But I found even more interesting those moments that I spoke with the CEOs and CFOs of these companies about their business itself. Um, and in the, the, at the same time, percolating in the back were these ideas that Adam and I had about pay together. Uh, and I decided, I decided actually for first to really make startup law my, my focus of, of my career. And I actually left Cooley LLP to join a firm called Silicon Legal Strategy, uh, which is a boutique startup firm here. Uh, also absolutely fantastic firm to work for and great people to work with. Um, but they focused solely on startups. So I could really dig my teeth into um, even more, uh, more on the legal side for those things. For example, I, I took a hold of commercial contracts a lot more. So really getting into the nitty gritty on the business terms of every deal that was going through. Um, and while, while all this is going on, Adam and I are discussing this project of, we, we really should try this. And I had this moment of, it's time to make that leap. It, it's time to see what it's like to be in the driver's seat. Time to see what, you know, Joey at Allbirds is living his reality uh, every day. And, and in a position where I'm very, or in a, in a situation that I'm very passionate about, that, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, these were all real problems that I had. And I said, if I'm having these problems and Adam's having these problems, countless others must. We should just take the reins and try to see if we can solve this for them. Good, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's such an interesting background to have like that first row seat into the legal side and the business side of working with startups and then now transitioning that experience into founding your own company. So curious, to, in your own day-to-day -day as CEO, uh, with that background, is that translating over? Is that like a one-on-one or like what types of experiences do you draw from and how does that translate I over? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I actually think that my legal training really set me up well for the CEO position for, for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, you know, being a lawyer is to be detail oriented that, you know, we are the ones who have to look for every comma, dot every I, cross every T. And, and when you're running a startup, the details of every aspect of your business are so core to you, to you, who you are, what you want to create, that having that training to be detail focused and saying, you know, even this little, you know, change this color scheme, just, you know, one notch to the right, a little less saturated, whatever it is, that level of detail is what you need to succeed. And that's something my legal training gave me. Additionally, being in fintech, you know, it is a highly regulated industry and it does not hurt to have a lawyer in house who can, you know, go read reg D or reg double D and make sure that you are actually complying with your advertising laws or whatever else uh, it is that you have to come across. Um, so I've had a lot of direct experience being able to bring my legal training into day-to-day -day activities that we do here. Um, and then the last thing is, you know, a lot of being a CEO is, is relationship building and it's conflict solving and it's all of the things that lawyers are trained to do, sort of be that detached person and say, okay, I need to make a decision. First, I need to come up with a decision-making framework. Then I have to apply it. I have to make sure I understand who the stakeholders are and how that's going to affect them and then execute on the end. And, and that is a large part of my job as the CEO as well. So legal training, great way to come into a leadership position in a startup. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for all that context. Um, I would love to dive into uh, some of the nuts and bolts of the app itself. Um, so maybe I can pass the mic to you just to speak to, uh, you know, what is pay together? How does the app work? What are the core features? Absolutely. So our, our, as, I, as I said, uh, our premier or MVP product is the Together card. It is an actual MasterCard debit card. The way it works is each partner signs up for a Together account, links their own existing checking account. So, so no need to open a new account, no need to wait three days to ACH transfer anything across. We'll use Plaid to just click into your Wells Fargo, your Bank of America, your city. Uh, and then when you go into the app, you and your partner will choose how you want to split your expenses. And you can either select one ratio that splits it 50, 50, 60, 40. Every purchase that you make is split that way. Or you can choose subcategories like 
utilities, they want to spend 50, 50, but you know, my girlfriend eats more than me when we go out. So I want to spend, I want to split that 70, 30 so that she's the one paying the majority there. Um, so you can set those however you like. And then from there, it's simply swipe and be done. Uh, every, every time you swipe, an authorization signal is sent to pay together. We interpret it. We do some you know, fraud and security checks. Uh, and then if everything is good, we'll process the split on the back end and then charge each of you your precise share. And you're done. Yeah. Got it. Awesome. And I installed the app the other day just to get a sense of the onboarding flow. And I think there were some cool stats in there. I think it mentioned that you guys have over 30,000 users, 180,000 purchases, over 800K spent, including 447K of those transactions in this year alone. So clearly you have users in there who are poking around who are experiencing uh, the app. And I'm curious, what, what, are the, what is the initial feedback like? What do users love about it? What are things that you have on the roadmap? Yeah, so uh, we we do our best to call every single customer that we have. Uh, I think, you know, I probably made 100 calls this month alone. Uh, and the number one piece of feedback that we get is this has taken money issues out of the number one position in a relationship. You know, there are a lot of people who tried the same things that Adam and I did, be that a joint bank account and authorized credit card usage. Many, many people with like the Venmo, the Venmo and uh, Splitwise uh, pairing, um, all of whom said, you know, Honestly, we were just having fights. We were like, no, I paid for this last time. You need to pay for this this time. With pay together, you, we walked in, we set our ratio once, we agreed on it up front. So we knew that it would be a fair balance and whatever it was. And then we never had to talk about it again. We just went to the grocery store, split it. And all of a sudden we had more time for us. Uh, less time, again, getting your minor in accounting and more time getting your major in your own relationship. Um, and that's been, you know, the most rewarding portion of this has been hearing that feedback. People saying, this has made a, a measurable difference in my life. Yeah, you you can uh, <laughs> take the arguments about finding yourself the table and argue about like, I don't know, other stuff, who does the dishes, uh, whatever you have. <laughs> Argue about what you're going to have to eat, not how you're going to split it. That's exactly. my exactly. There you go. That's a, that's a great tagline. <laughs> um, and I'm curious, with apps like Pay Together, you know, clearly you, you mentioned, you know, before this, people are using Venmo, they're using Cash App, they're using other apps to split um, expenses. How do you convince folks to use Pay Together instead of some of these other uh, products that are more generalized? Yeah, so I'll tell you what, most of the time Venmo and Splitwise do it for us. Uh, you know, a lot of the people who found us were the ones who, who had realized that this was not working for them. Um, and more often than not, what we, we actually used to have a good, good, good uh, catchphrase that we used a lot, which was for more than Venmo serious couples. Uh, because it's true, you know, a lot of the Venmo, a lot of the problem with Venmo is a constant one-off transaction after every purchase, maybe at the end of every month. Uh, but it's a constant revisiting of the app, resending and re-requesting and re-requesting and hoping to get paid back and explaining to people all of that time that you've spent being an accountant, going ahead and collecting all your receipts, doing all of the math, hoping that it was right, making those requests, making the re-requests, you don't have to do that anymore. And that alone for most people is like, geez, I was spending a lot more time than I realized doing this before. And, you know, we, though we charge $1 a month, we do give it a, you know, a, a two month free trial period. Um, and that free trial period has proven exceedingly helpful in convincing people like, yeah, come and see the service and just think to yourself, how much time have I spent this week, uh, uh, saved this week, not having to do all of the things I did before. And that has taken most people off to the races. Right. And I wonder, you know, when you plot the trajectory of a relationship uh, early, in the early days, it's going to be you know, less committal. Maybe you're on Venmo. I guess at, at what point does someone transition over to a product like pay together? And, uh, and when you go to the other end of the spectrum, when you're, you know, long-term relationship, getting married, does it tail off? Um, like, just curious at what point does, what part of the picture does pay together come in? Yeah. So, I mean, it definitely comes in at, at various points in a relationship. We've had people who have been maybe three months into their relationship and are just sort of like, we, we, we're, we're at the point where we're equals and we'd like to start splitting. And, you know, these are all simple expenses. It's usually a, a restaurant or a movie or, or something of that effect. And, you know, to me, that's one of the greatest times to get into the program, because when you think about how money in a relationship function together, money is really the medium with which you start purchasing the experiences that form the basis of your relationship. And when you're sharing those, those when you're sharing that expense, in purchasing that experience, you're sharing and building those bonds of your relationship. Um, so very early on, it proves very useful for those. I think the vast majority 
majority of our customers are people who have either started cohabitating or getting into the cohabitation period where they're really realizing, okay, now the shared expenses are starting to really pile up. The, the gas utilities, the cable, the streaming services, everything. Um, and having one card that we can just throw down and have all of our household expenses taken care of at once without ever having to talk about it was something that a lot of people have loved. And then to a latter point, we've actually had a number of couples who have come to us and said, we just got married. We are 31, 32, 33 years old. We have entire financial lives developed already. We have checking accounts of our own, savings accounts, investment accounts. We don't want to go through the process of combining all of these assets. We, we've earned this on our own. And that's where pay together's use of this decoupled accounting structure, plugging into each person's checking account, proves like sort of the concept that we have here. We've basically just added a virtual layer on top of the things you already own so that you don't have to change anything. And you can just fold this into a, a virtual joint checking account of sorts uh, at that point. Um, so those are all the places that we see them come in. And then <laughs> funnily enough, when you, when you launch a product, you have this idea of, you know, this is who my customer is. And then you see the reality change that to you or for you to some degree. Um, we've had people come in who are, you know, parents and children, uh, college age children and their parents who are like, look, I'm covering most of this person's bills, but I want them to have some skin in the game. So we're going to split these things 80-20. Um, or the other one we've seen is uh, divorced parents have shown up and said, look, we have some sort of joint need for our child, some expense that we have to share. We do not want to talk to each other. <laughs> Let's go ahead and use this as the way to share those expenses. Right. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Um, and you mentioned the app currently monetizes by charging a dollar per month. Uh, just curious, is that what does the monetization picture look like? Um, is it just that monthly fee? Yeah, so we have a monthly fee. And then as a uh, as an actual card provisioner, uh, we also get interchange revenue on uh, the back end. It's a very small amount, um, but it is another revenue stream. Uh, but this is also sort of just the beginning of of. Uh, the pay together framework that we're building here. Um, you know, what we'd like to do is now that we've sort of tackled this joint checking or joint expense problem, our next project is going to be rolling out the next step of things that you, you use money for in a relationship, which is saving for future experiences, right? Maybe that's your honeymoon, a big trip out to Hawaii, something to that effect. Um, and then we'll want to so we'll, we'll want to then offer savings product products in the near future. And then after that, once we've got those taken care of, the next thing would be, what's the really long-term goals you're looking for? Well, that's, you know, retirement and end of life. And for that, we would like to roll out like an investment platform, most like a robo investor. So not, not a Robin Hood. We're not here to short options and meme stocks to, to hell here. Uh, we, we just want to build very, you know, sure ways to the future for your relationship. Uh, and all of those products would then come with a tiered subscription fee, depending on where, how many of the products you're using. And obviously each one has its own sort of backend um, revenue stream as well. Got it. Yeah. So that would be stashed together, saved together, invest together, some of the additional products. Also. That's correct. Yes. Got it. Yeah. So when you think about the bigger picture uh, of your product roadmap, but also the current landscape of the competition out there, there's cl clearly competition from multiple angles. You have your tangential uh, you know, money transfer uh, apps like Venmo, Zelle Cash App. That's uh, a piece of that business. And you also have direct competitors like Imela, like Honeydew, incumbent players who are targeting couples. How do you, how, how do you think about the competition? Um, and is there... You know, obviously, there, there must be space for multiple uh, you know, players in, in one space, of course. But how do you think about this competition? Uh, first of all, there's space only for pay together. None, none of these <laughs> other people can be in there. Uh, you, when we think about the competition, I think you've broken it down pretty well. That there's what we call sort of the shiny wrappers on traditional products. That would be like your Zetas, your Honeydews, for, for example, right? Really, they're just offering a joint checking account again. You still have to open a new account. You still have to wait three days to fund that account. You still have complete full ownership by both parties of that account. Uh, and, and for us, it, that really doesn't move the needle much. I mean, you, you could do that via Wells Fargo or Bank of America if you wanted to, and then throw a PFM on top of it and you're good. Uh, there's nothing sort of new and interesting about that in our opinion. Um, Ivel is an interesting, uh, another interesting competitor. They're probably the most closely related to us. They, in fact, a lot of the language on their website looks a lot like ours, uh, but it is, theirs is, 
again, opening two new individual checking accounts. So whereas we use your existing Bank of America or Wells Fargo, Ivella asked the partners to open a new account with them. Each partner opens a new account. Then they connect that to a card and then they can split transactions from there. And again, our view is why do you need this intermediary? You've brought these things to your, you already have these things. You have your Wells Fargo checking account. You have your Bank of America checking account. We have APIs like Plaid and even using just the ACH system to manually verify to actually tap into what you already have. So to us, there, there's no reason to add another sort of account structure on top of what, what exists in your life already. Um, and then of course, there's the Venmo and the cash apps of the world, as you noted. And, and for us, we are really the solution to that. Uh, you know, our view is that is not working for the modern generation. Yes, a lot of people use them to make one-off transactions to their friends, but the more often you have to use it, particularly in your relationship, again, it brings you back to a CPA mentality. It takes some of the love out and makes it much more transactional and, and almost physically uh, transactional because we're picking that up and actually charging money to one another for that. Um, in, in the pay together world without having to do any of that, it's just, again, focus on you two, focus on what matters to you, and we'll take care of the rest. Got it. And it, I think it's also not out of the question that you know, anytime a startup comes out with an interesting pivot on uh, a certain space that you see bigger players, incumbents start to uh, copy that. So in a world where, say, Robinhood, Chime, one of these bigger incumbents just say, hey, let's add a couple's banking feature or finance feature to our app, is that like a, a, a huge threat? Or what do you think about stuff like that? So we do not view that as a huge threat, actually. Um, building out the system that we have uh, took a lot of time and is very specialized. Like processing payments and handling risk for two people rather than one is a whole different ballgame. And ultimately, Robinhood, uh, Robinhood uh, Chime, et cetera, they found their sweet spot. They're like, look, we're, we're going to collect the individuals here. And guess what? Chime, we're happy to work with you. Connect, we'll use one of your Chime accounts on one side of the pay together product. And that way you don't even have to build out that portion of your, your program. Um, and as we've seen from more traditional players like Wells Fargo and, and uh, Bank of America and Citi, they're not very innovative in this space. They, they came up with one idea in 1951 called the joint checking account and said, hey, this is it guys, this is all you got, enjoy it. Uh, and, and haven't innovated from there on out on that process. And, and I think there's also, as these companies, the Robin Hoods, the Chimes and let alone one of the big banks get larger and larger and bureaucracy gets bigger and bigger. There's less of a reason to open into new lines like that and, rather than just stick with the things that are working and improve upon those. Got it. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. And by the way, is the company currently bootstrapped? Yes. So we are bootstrapped uh, to date. So since 2018, we've accomplished, we're quite proud of that, honestly. We, we've accomplished a ton on our own dime here. Uh, but uh, we are we are looking to move into the VC funding round coming probably early next year, uh, because I'm sure, as you know, the fintech space is just a very capital intensive space. There are a lot of times you just have to set up bank accounts that have 50, 100. And if you want like an MTL one day, a million dollars that just sits there and does nothing other than act as a backstop for in case anything goes wrong. Um, so for, from our view, in order to grow and expand, we will need to get VC funding to meet the capital requirements that that will, that will take. Got it. Also, just a, a random question when it comes to that piece of the picture. Um, do you have any thoughts on equity crowdfunding sites like, you know, like Republic, WeFunder, has that ever, is it, would that ever be an option? Um, I, I don't think that we would avail ourselves of crowdfunding. Um, honestly, one, usually the crowdfunding space just doesn't raise as much money as like a fintech would need. Mm -hmm. um, and two, there are some concerns I have around having unaccredited investors involved in the company um, in case anything went wrong uh, or there was an m a or a public offering at some point. Um, I would just prefer to keep them off the table. So we, we are really focused on the uh, sort of dead center with the VCs and not just for the money, to be honest. Like, yes, obviously that's a big portion of what you go to a venture capitalist for, but you also go for the, the mentorship, the experience mm -hmm. that they have, you know, Adam and I are the only two people running this company. We right. obviously each have our own specialized set of skills. I'm a, a lawyer that can do corporate governance and finance. Adam is a great a technical engineer, uh, but you know we don't have a marketer. And a VC might very well be the person who goes, hey, I've got someone that can help you build this brand in a way that you may not otherwise be able to see. So we see a whole lot of both financial and mentorship and, and advice opportunities down that path that we just wouldn't have with the crowdfunding space. Got it. it makes sense. And you know, sp speaking of not having a marketer and being bootstrapped, what does the current marketing picture look like? Is it you yourself and Adam, um, you know, trying out different, you know, tests? Is it contracting out? What is the current marketing strategy? 
Yeah. So when we first launched back in, in January of last year, uh, we, we sort of spun up a bunch of just very basic Facebook, Instagram ads. And I would say basically the first year of the program was you know, working on bug fixes, making sure we had a stable platform, making sure everything worked well and collecting tons of information. Just who were the people coming in? What were their demographics? Who was our target audience? You know, we, again, we had an idea, but we really needed to put the product out there to find out what that what that target audience was. Um, so once we now have about, you know, a little over a year's worth of data, we are now targeting those ads much more precisely. Um, we do a little bit of outsourcing to sort of designers uh, to help make the ads for the actual campaigns. We actually did recently hire a, a marketing firm to help us sort of develop a campaign uh, and help us test those markets much more iteratively, I guess is the way to put it, you know, a quick iteration on markets to see, or audiences, I apologize, audiences to see what, you know, is hitting, what language is hitting, what ads images are hitting. Um, we've also, we are also, I'm very excited about this portion, about to roll out uh, what, what I would, what is the first of its kind couples rewards program. So in about two weeks, Pay Together is going to go ahead and introduce uh, a, a new couples rewards program that is cash back for things that you use the most. So for example, uh, for those things you, you uh, uh, buy on a date night, you'll get 5% cash back. For those things you use at home, that's 3% cash back and 1% on every other purchase that's not illegal or otherwise disallowed. Uh, our view there being, look, again, the money that you spend as a couple is really forming the are is purchasing the experience that form the basis of your relationship. They, they are the memories you rely upon when you go to do your wedding vows. You, you call back to these things you did years ago. Uh, and we want to reward you for that. We want to encourage you to keep, build those bonds, build them faster and, and have some on us, I guess is the way to put it. Uh, and then for those people who are cohabitating, you know, all of these things that you share, uh, again, form the basis of, of the home that you're creating together. And for that, you should also be rewarded. Uh, so that is, is a, a next level marketing thing that we'll be rolling out here in the near future to sort of give even more uh, emphasis to that. Sweet. So it sounds like there's some paid marketing going on, um, some additional features uh, that serve as kind of like social hooks. Um, do you see paid marketing being uh, and paid acquisition being a big piece of the picture? Obviously, it's a very competitive space to, to be in right now as a mobile app trying to compete with these other huge advertisers who are just spending uh, just God knows how much money and having payback windows that are, you know, years and years <laughs> as a startup, how do you compete with that? And do, do, are there maybe organic channels that you're also looking at maybe like content strategy or anything else that might work for, for your team? Yeah. So I, I so on the paid advertising front, I think that when you're working in the B2C land, like we are getting your name out there as widely and broadly as possible, while also hitting the, the audience that is most likely to actually use your product is very important. And, and I think that while you may have visas and MasterCards out there spending, as you said, God knows how much money on their marketing campaigns, it is the fact that we are targeted at couples that kind of gives us the advantage there in the paid marketing space. These are people who are looking for a very specific thing, something that, you know, Visa, MasterCard, well, I'm sorry, MasterCard definitely offers it via pay together. Uh, something that City, Citibank, Ameri Bank of America, Wells Fargo just doesn't offer. And so their ads just sort of slide off the radar. Um, but you're right. I mean, ultimately, the best marketing we could have is word of mouth. And we have seen some of that word of mouth churn coming our way uh, as, as we get out, our, our name out there. Um, I would also say that, you know, part of the, the, the difficulty in marketing a fintech in particular is the fact that by its very nature, a fintech requires a lot of personal information. You know, we still have to run a, a KYC check, a know your customer identity check to make sure that you are who you say you are and that you're not going to end up stealing from someone else or the rest. And that means that we need to take your social security number. Um, but, you know, we don't take that lightly. We use the best encryption to keep that encrypted. We use it for the moment we need it, check your identity, and we never look at it again. And that's all there is is. But convincing people that, you know, we're not fraudsters, we're not here to take, steal your identity. That's a big sort of hurdle to get over. Um, and one that I think word of mouth helps with a lot. It, you know, if your friend can tell you, I know these guys, in fact, I talked to Mike on the phone like last Friday, and then he sent me a $20 gift certificate for taking the time out of my day. That's going to do a lot of the legwork on just building that brand awareness and, and social proof that that we need in order to really succeed. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for sharing all that info. Um, you know, th that's all the questions I have for the moment. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to chat. Is there any other announcements uh, you want to drop? I know you mentioned the rewards product is coming out. Um, yeah, are you hiring for any positions? Any, any other info missing? 
No, no hiring right now. When, when we get that VC funding, we'll be back here. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, the last thing I kind of want to wrap up with, you know, again, rewards program coming out, it's going to be great. Uh, and then sort of to tie back to that uh, overall product roadmap portion of things, you know, once we have these things set up, when we think about the future of pay together and what pay together can be, we really are trying to build an automated joint banking platform for couples. So once we, we have obviously our automatic spending with its splitting, we're going to add in the savings account stash stash for short term goals. Uh, uh, that's your like trip to Hawaii or your new furniture, et cetera. Uh, and then save, save together, which is a more long term rainy day account, you know, your six month or eight month fund, whatever that is. But we also want to leverage the fact that we've already got this together card and we've got a whole platform that sits behind it. So when when you open these accounts, what we'd like, what we will be doing is you'll swipe your together card, we'll split that, and then we'll round that up and put it into your stash. And then let's say that you've met your Hawaiian vacation goal. Let's start rounding it up and moving it into your save goal. And then let's say you hit your three month save goal. Well, let's go ahead and push it into the goal and have this ecosystem where thing, money is moving automatically from the things that you purchase, the things that you saved, the things that you invest, and vice versa. You know, all of a sudden you, you're on your way to Hawaii. Instead of tapping into your checking account, let's tap into your stash together goal and spend off of that. And in the future, when pay together is what we really believe it can be, we really, our goal is to take that stat where, you know, something between 33 and 41% of American couples say that finances are the biggest drain on the relationship and just remove it by just automating that funds flow and doing all of that thinking for you. And, and that I think is what, what we really can be and something that will be a huge value add to uh, the country as a whole, really. Absolutely. If I see divorce rates start to creep down over the next 10, 20 years, I'm going to know. <laughs> That's exactly. Right. Go ahead and ring, ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Mike, thank you so much again. Uh, really interesting stuff and uh, best of luck to your team. Thank you very much, Oliver. It's been great speaking with you. Likewise.